The Rebuilding of the Alexander Hamilton Bridge, a mini-series by Crazy New York Driver. That's me, and this is part two. I strongly recommend that you have watched part one before watching part two. This is the beginning of the Harlem River Drive Viaduct, which goes from 178th Street down to 170th Street. It's a long, narrow, hilly, sloping section of roadway that was constructed in 1962. As you can see, it often gets backed up. What happened was, by chance, the day I filmed this, which was, I guess, around May 23rd, 2010, unbeknownst to me, they had shut the right lane down for emergency construction 24 hours a day with no notice. As you can see, we're walking up to that now. I'd like to point out the column on that beautiful bridge up ahead, as you can see. That is the high bridge that we talked about in the last video that connects Manhattan to the Bronx that's been closed to people since 1970 because a lot of trouble occurred up there. Sadly, I myself was never up there, of course, but maybe someday they'll open it. On the right hand side now, I want you to look at that old fashioned light post. It's made of cast iron. It's original from 1962. They have upgraded the electric since then. You can see the pipe on the side, right on top of the concrete there. But that's an original cast iron light post from the era. There aren't many of them left because most of them got knocked out. But what I want you to notice about the light post is the way they carefully maintain it. Now you'll say, well, what do you mean, carefully maintain it? Take a look at this. A wide open, no cover on it, wires exposed to the elements. No wonder why the lights never work on these parkways. But anyhow, let's look at some other features of the Harlem River Drive viaduct. Looking straight up, you can see that's the high bridge. Note the cyclone fence you see on top with razor wire. They don't want anybody up there. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the divider you're looking at. Originally there was no metal guardrail, it was just the concrete. And over the years the concrete eroded from the salt in the air, consequently it was all worn away and people were going head on into each other. They finally repaired it to an adequate height. Now as I told you they shut down the right lane unannounced. What happened here is a section of the roadway fell through causing a gaping hole and the rebar was showing through so they're rebuilding that section. Now let's take a closer look. I want to show you something. First of all we are heading southbound now. That's heading downtown. And As you can see right after the affected area traffic opens up and it's wide open. But you're not interested in that are you? You're interested in what went wrong. What went wrong is that I put this picture in twice in a row. Can you believe I did this? Yep, typical of me. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay, take a look at this. This is the original cast iron metal railing from the period and note the improved, if you want to use the word improved, electrical system which they tap right into right on top there. That is the new electrical system for the light poles. They decided to run it on top instead of underneath. But looking back, that is High Bridge, where I just walked down from, and that's the right lane where the section came through. Now, the left lane is very narrow coming down, as you can see. Normally, it's not a problem. But when you count on the fact that you've closed off one lane entirely, it makes it even narrower. And they put those thick railroad ties out there to slow down the traffic. I'm going to show you something that happened, but before we get to that, a lot of people don't know that there's a lot of solid rock bordering this highway. That had to be blasted through in order to make the viaduct. If you look to the left closely, you can see there's a screen over the rock to prevent falling rock, which was an occasional problem back in the day. Getting back to the construction, notice how that one railroad tie has been knocked out. Now think about it. A car coming down could not do that. I figured out what happened. An unauthorized 18-wheeler got off the George Washington Bridge and came tooling on down. 
not realizing what he was going to head into. And the road slightly curves to the right there, and there's no way a semi pulling a, a 53-foot trailer can clear that. Look at all the rubber marks on the wooden railroad tie there. That's from his trailer wheels. 100% sure, boys. That's what happened. He hit that and dislodged it. I'm not sure if they even got the truck out of there. But anyway, I just thought that was a little interesting thing. Basically, I don't have too much else to say. I really wanted to do this in the worst way. I just don't have the time, all of it. But I had it today because it's the Memorial Day weekend. I want to thank you for watching. And I welcome your comments. Please comment below. If you have something good to say, write it. If you have something bad to say, write that too. I do not block people. I'm interested in what you've got to say, especially if you're from the area and drive on these roads. I'm going to close out with the beautiful picture of the majestic high bridge. I'm crazy New York driver, and you're not. Come on back next week. I got something special planned, and I hope you like it. Until then, this is Crazy New York Driver. Thanks for watching.